death. Good and evil. Two sides of a chess game. Two forces of the universe. One magnificent, the other sinister. It is said that the devil plays for men's souls. So does Dr. Fu Manchu. Satan himself. Evil incarnate. Surgeon General staff and presently engaged in a research project for the United States government, the sustaining of human life in the vacuum of outer space. I was on my way to Alma Madre, New Mexico, where the U.S. Armed Forces maintain an advanced rocket testing station. We were moving along without any particular incident until... Anything wrong? Nothing too bad, sir. The beam went off. Probably a power failure. I didn't think much about it at the time. We flew along on instruments for a while. Then, just as suddenly, the beam signal came on again. There we are, sir. We're a little off course, but we'll be back on. That's funny. I didn't realize we drifted that far off course. Well, we're back on now, so nothing to worry about. This is the fourth missing plane in as many weeks. First a transport, then an army bomber, a government personnel plane, and now an army transport. Three of them missing along the southern coast, one off the Pacific coast. Coincidence? Sabotage? You take it from there. The investigation of the four disappearances has gone through channel, Sir Dennis. I can assure you no stone is being left unturned. I intended no criticism, sir. It's just that Dr. Petrie happens to be a very particular friend of mine, and I'd like to offer whatever help I can. Well, I don't see why that can't be arranged. You're very highly regarded here, sir. Thank you, sir. Has the investigation turned up anything significant yet? Yes, we're convinced the disappearances were deliberate, not accidental. Sabotage, yeah? Oh, would you see that Sir Dennis is supplied with complete reports of the four missing planes, Miss Hadley? I'd prefer not to give you our opinions on that matter, Sir Dennis. I'll be very interested to see if you arrive at our conclusions. There'll be a full committee meeting here Thursday. We shall expect you then. Well, thank you for your cooperation, sir. <coughs> Thanks. Goodbye, sir. Good day. Thank you. Sir Dennis. Oh, thank you, Betty. How's it going? Uh, no doubt about those four planes being deliberately pulled off course. Automatic beam stations were tampered with in every instance. Thank you. Even madmen make sense, but this deliberate murder. I'm not at all sure that it was murder. I don't understand. I've gone over and over the backgrounds of these four men missing in these four planes. And there emerges a pattern. Each plane carried an authority on some phase of space science. Space science? Precisely. Dr. Petrie, an authority on space medicine. Others missing were a meteorologist, an astronomer, aerodynamics engineer. But who'd want to destroy minds as brilliant as this? Daring and brilliant enough to look into the future. That's just the point, Betty. I'm not sure that these minds are destroyed. I believe these men are still alive. But, Sir Dennis... Do you have any idea what a valuable and potent weapon a man-made satellite would be? Well, I've heard Dr. Petrie on the subject, but I didn't pay much attention. Just imagine this is the satellite, shot out beyond the Earth's atmosphere, where it stays in a vacuum, beyond the pull of Earth's gravity. A space station from which man could observe the Earth. Well, Dr. Petrie was trying to tell me something about that the other day. How man can survive under great atmospheric pressure, nervous strain, artificial oxygen. But it seems so unreal and fantastic. Now it does, Betty, but ten years from now it won't. 
That's why far-sighted men of genius find this study so fascinating. As the Earth turns beneath this space station, every country in the world would come under observation. Rockets could be fired at any place on Earth during wartime, no matter how remote. Men on this space station could get a televised view of any activity here on Earth. A spy system that would outmode anything we know of today. I could go on and on explaining the possibilities, Betty, but I'm sure you get the point. The man who first succeeds in getting a manned satellite into outer space would not only observe the Earth, but he would control it. I see. That's why we can't afford to lose these men. Our research will be set back five to ten years by the nation who has these men. They'd be that much ahead of us, wouldn't they? Precisely. But which nation? May not necessarily be a nation, Betty. It may be a syndicate or a man like Fu Manchu. in a state of near exhaustion. I had little or no recollection of what had happened to me after the plane went down. All I could recall was that we'd made a crash landing into the sea. Nor did I have any idea of what country I was in. My captors did not speak to me, so I could not guess their nationality. Suddenly, there he was. And the unexpected sight of that evil visage drove the aching numbness from my body. Uh, welcome to our uh, Hubble quarters, Dr. Petrie. I should have known. I uh, do not know that uh, you should have. Neither you nor our good friend, Sir Dennis, could possibly know uh, the nature of my uh, present activities. Whatever it is, I... I have no doubt that it's as rotten as ever. On the contrary. Uh, this time, I am inspired by only the highest motives. If only you knew how high. What do you want of me? Knowledge. You have uh, little else of value. Kolb. Yes, Master. Uh, see that Dr. Petrie is uh, properly fed and rested. I shall expect him at dinner with the others. Smith, British Intelligence. I'm Dr. Weisberg. I've been told you want to see me. Yes, how do you do, sir? I haven't much time. We are planning to launch a rocket in a few minutes. Well, I, I won't keep you long. This is a question of security, I understand. Yes. Four other space scientists, such as yourself, have been lost in aeroplane mishaps. I know. Unfortunate. In this work, we need them all. We have reason to believe that you may be next on the list. I? Furthermore, I have a feeling that your fellow scientists are not dead, and I intend to find them. And uh, if they are dead? Well, my reason for feeling they're alive stems from the same reasoning that prompts me to believe that you're next on the list. So far, each of these four missing scientists has been a specialist in some field of space science. That is true. Petri, authority on sustaining life in the conditions of a vacuum, Saunders, astronomer, Kerensky, aerodynamics, and Muller, meteorologist. Exactly. Four men whose knowledge is essential to an exploration of outer space. Four men whose work would ultimately be useless unless they could get to outer space. And to get there, they would need an expert in guided missiles. You. I'm beginning to understand. Then it doesn't seem too fantastic. I've survived two wars and many governments. 
My work has carried me far beyond ordinary human misery. I can no longer find anything too fantastic or unendurable. Then neither would you find a man like Fu Manchu unbelievable? Of course not. He's no more unbelievable than I. You know, Doctor, yours is a rare genius. A remarkable balance between mathematics and imagination. Sometimes more of a weakness than a strength. But it's brought you where you are today. And it's also brought you to great peril. Every power-hungry nation in the world wants you. Of course. That's why I always live in a kind of concentration camp. Even though it is of my own choosing. Well, so far, it's the only thing that saved you. Which brings me to the point of why I'm here. They are beginning the test. If you will step over here, you may watch. recording equipment will be waiting as soon as the rocket is retrieved. I'll be extremely busy the rest of the day. Well, thank you, sir. I'll see you again this evening. might result in a certain amount of danger. What kind of danger? I wish I knew. The purpose of this flight is to find out. You know, there's one thing I must tell you, fellas. If at any time that you feel that you're taking an unnecessary risk, you're free to make your own choice. Beyond that point, your duty will be purely voluntary. Is that clear? If it isn't, we'll ask questions as we go along. Right. Dr. Vosberg is on his way, flying the planned route. Call. Go aboard the ship and are put to sea. Our radio our men in the States are to follow the same instructions as before. Yes, Master. Uh, moving along on schedule, everything normal. Ten miles south of Big Springs, Texas, on the Dallas Range. Sir Dennis, will you? We lost our beam, sir. This might. 
might be it. Army transport, Able 2604, calling Dallas, over. If you can't raise Dallas, I'll stay on this bearing until you get a fix. Army transport, 2604, calling Dallas, over. Transmitter's gone out. We're not getting out to him. I'll check the fuses. If we continue on this bearing, we should be picking up Dallas. I don't understand what could go wrong, sir. Power shortage at the station. They got her fixed. Sure, of course. What kind of a navigator are you, anyway? I don't get it. I believe I do. Can you follow that beam? Still normal procedure, sir. 80 degrees off course, that's impossible. Possible is right. That would put a beam station right in the middle of the Caribbean. We've been flying blind for more than 15 minutes. We must have drifted. But I've been watching the compass all the time. That bearing's crazy. We've been following a false beam. Uh, we'll move on it for 10 minutes more. Then if it doesn't check with our course, we'll go back to the original heading. Well, that's what I've been waiting for. Now we have the choice of following a strange beam or the compass. Which would it be? What's your wish? The beam. Well, I warned you it may be dangerous. Doesn't matter, sir. The General's orders were to let you make the decision. Mexico, approximately 50 miles north of Tampico. Can't be out of gas already. The gauges read half full. I don't understand it. Where Full Manchu is concerned, there are a lot of things we don't understand. Switch on the reserve tanks. Not enough gas to get to the mainland. the oral null, sir. That means we just passed over a beam station. In the middle of the ocean? Let down and have a look. There's a vessel down below that. It's a beam station, all right, and plenty illegal. What now, sir? Well, if we're nearly out of gas, we don't have much choice, do we? No, I'm afraid not. Set her down as close to that craft as you can. Yes, sir. There's plane. Also, swallow the bait. Eh? Huh? Skipper, look. Brace your back against that bulkhead. Wisely, Sir Dennis. I hope you will not regret your reckless action. If it brings you to heel, Fu Manchu, I won't regret it. I bring me to heel, Sir Dennis? Is not the shoe on the wrong foot? You don't think I came here without any precautions? Such as? Such as having my plane tracked by the radar of a following plane. Yes, we should now be hearing the searching party. The Mexican authorities have also been alerted. And soon they'll be combing the area. I believe, Sir Dennis, that uh, what I have always admired about you, although most reluctantly, is your inexhaustible resourcefulness. I might well return that compliment, Fu Manchu. You hear? 
You see, I wasn't bluffing. That's just one of many. I am so humbly sorry, Sir Dennis. But I am afraid your well-laid plans have come to nothing. That's a matter of opinion. I still feel I hold the winning hand. Are you suggesting uh, we bargain further? The only bargain I might consider would be the delivery here of the four scientists. And uh, what of myself and my staff? That'll be up to those who arrest you. That was your ship with a false beam signal. A warning bomb, no doubt, asking surrender. Drop the gun, trigger man, or the boss gets it. Sometimes we must bow to fate. Uh, please uh, to obey the suggestion of our most valiant guest. What do we do with them, Sir Dennis? Uh, the wind has uh, shifted uh, somewhat, uh, Sir Dennis. Uh, shall we go on with the bargaining? I'll give you five minutes to bring the scientists here. And in uh, return for this uh, favor? You dare bargain further in the face of a gun? Uh, please, uh, Sir Dennis. Uh, you do not think I would be as stupid as that? Uh, this innocent-looking instrument is in potential a short-wave contact with the fuse of a bomb, a bomb that rests beneath the chambers of your four valuable friends. One a flick of the switch, and your friends will work and breathe no more. You're bluffing. Uh, Sir Dennis, you know me better than that by now. Do I touch the switch? All right, Fu Manchu. Name your terms. Extremely liberal. Freedom for myself and my staff. You'll be free to go. Beyond that, I can't guarantee. It'll be out of my hands. Beyond that, neither you nor I will have to worry, Sir Dennis. But I must have your solemn promise. You have my word. Uh, here is uh, the key. You heard me give my word. You get down the road and get the police here as quickly as possible. That must be the Mexican priest we've been expecting. bargain than his, and I gave my word. Yes, but what a chance for you. May never come again. Well, how far do you think he can get in this deserted country? Oh, not far. Just down the river by motor launch to the estuary where he takes a submarine for Red China. What? Did he tell you that? Yes. That's how he's planning to get us out of the country. All he was waiting for was Vosper. Well, if he was that confident... Look here, Petrie. I brought along this little instrument out of a consuming curiosity to find out whether or not Fu Manchu was bluffing. I wouldn't bet either way. Shall we try? Why not? Mine's abandoned. <laughs> well, it looks like this time he really took it. Fu Manchu. If you're going to call his bluff, be sure you hold the aces. 